Let's see. We have... Hi. Hey, Tatiana. How are you guys? How are you? Good. Good to, good to, good to talk to you. Yes. <laughs> hi. I've seen your videos. I don't know you personally, but hi. Fun. <laughs> this is gonna be a lot of fun. It's fine. It's, I'm glad that I finally get to meet you because the last time we talked, I had my. You, it was a video, but I had a. I had a. You were looking at my ear. <laughs> yeah, you didn't realize you called me with uh, with a video, and I was looking at your ear. It's okay though. I understand. <laughs> no, I'm glad. I am. I am. I was embarrassed, but now you're telling me that it's okay. I'm okay now. <laughs> no, 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 it's totally fine. <laughs> Tatiana, it is great to have you. Uh, you know, I tell you what, I have, you know, through Instagram, just like you look at the video of, you know, what we do in the Miela, uh, I follow you too, and I saw that you you had a, a very nice jump of uh, 194. I think that that was a... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome, by the way. Last year. You look, you look very good. I mean, it was... A good jump. It was a good jump. I don't know how that happened, I'll be honest. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Uh, you seem like a hardworking girl, you know, and, and it's just part of the process, I guess, you know? So. It's, was... um, it's weird. I think all of us have the same process. We kind of suck at practice and then we go to competition and it all gets put together and we all like, what? How did that happen? I've been working on my technique for so long, but at practice it never... It was never put together, so I didn't see the results, and then it happened. So I was like, "Ah, oh, so it, it can happen." <laughs> that is awesome. I feel that. You guys work a lot on technique. I've been following you guys, and my coach actually gets some ideas from what you post. So don't post anything too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing him, he's gonna like swing me from the roof one day. He's like, you can do it. It's okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's gonna end up one of these days. Have you seen the movie? Uh, uh, gosh, I don't remember now. Now I'm spacing out that movie uh, with uh, Adam Sandler, uh, Grown Ups. Have you seen that movie? It reminds me of something, but I'm not sure. Okay, no, no, no. Because then if I said the joke, you're not gonna get it because you haven't watched the movie. So. I'll send you the mo I'll send you the movie. Then okay. I'll you the it's okay. Okay. Uh, you know, first and foremost, again, thank you for being with us. Uh, it, is, it is truly a pleasure. Um, we are big fans. Okay. I, I, you know, I think that you are doing great things. Uh, you and your coach both. Um, thank you. Uh, tell me a little bit about you. I mean, how did you start jumping? Yeah, at what age? Uh, what was your high progression by age? I mean, just, just to get started and, and kind of like get an idea. Mm -hmm. So I started with basketball. Okay, I'm tall, right? the usual. <laughs> uh, but I sucked at it. <laughs> I hated it. Um, and I think basketball hated me more. I, I was tall but not capable to play basketball. And then a coach there was like, um, you look like you can try high jump. And I looked at him seriously in the eye. I was like, what is that? Like, I had no idea. I was, I was 14, I think. And I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't know what high jump is. Um, and after that, we started practicing. And I did both for a year. And I was, I jumped, I think, my first competition, I jumped 135. I don't know, feet. Yeah, yeah I hope you got two meters. OK. <laughs> no, no, we are, we, are, we are meters, too. OK, perfect. So I jumped 135, I think. And it was like local some local high school competition um actual junior high middle school i don't know um i don't remember and we started traveling the next year so i was like okay i'm done with basketball track is way more fun we get to travel around the country um so i put my energy on it and basically what won me over weirdly are the travels because my third year i think we went to barcelona and then italy so i was like okay i like this and then uh, somewhere around, I think it was, yeah, almost my last year in high school, I didn't know what I want to study. And here in Greece, you need to study um, and decide by your first year in high school to know what school you wanted to go. Because we don't have the option as in the U.S. Like, OK, I'm going to go to a university and pick what I want there. Um, I didn't know. 
So one of my friends was like, oh, like, you can go in the U.S. and just get two more years of undecided. And I was like, what do I have to do to go in the U.S.? So they're like, jump high. And I was like, okay, done. Okay. Tell me how much, how high do I have to jump? They're like 180, about 175 and higher, 180. So like, okay. So I jumped 182, I think, or 181 to get to the U.S. Petros recruited me. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, and then I fell in love with it for the travels, I'll be honest. And then just, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. We don't run that much, so I'd say it's the perfect event. We don't <laughs> run that much, and it's a lot of fun jumping. Uh, you're right. You're right. It, it, so I know that you throw, you, you are still young, so I think that it's okay if I ask this question. How old? Yes. Yeah. I'm 26. Okay, great. Okay, good. So you started. So what was your your the height progression by age? I mean, you started at 14. You told me. Okay, I I'll tell you what I remember because I don't remember everything. So I started with uh, 135, and then I think about 14. Um, yeah, I was about 14 when I started. And then 16, 17, I jumped. Yeah, 17, I jumped 182, and I think it was a national record, which I don't have anymore. Um, yes, 182, and that's what got me in the U.S. And then I was stable for a while. I jumped 188 my first year in the U.S. So that's... 19 yeah and then 190 constantly at the age of 21 and then at my 25 194 it's been a slow race right. Right. yeah because i had a lot of injuries in between as well and um but i can complain all like constantly i've been going up so i can't really complain i'm glad that's good i'm glad that's awesome uh, who who was the most influential person in your life? My um, my second coach in Greece, for sure. The one that I'm practicing right now as well, Ioana Um She was my second mother, kind of, because I spent more time with her than my mom, and we make fun of that because we like, you know how coaches are. They always spend more time with, with their athletes. Um, so she influenced me a lot. She supported my decision to go in the U.S., she wanted me to study something and not just sit here and just practice because most European athletes um, I don't know if you know the system here it's really hard to go to the university and um, do track so you have to usually pick unless you find a university that will help you in comparison to the US where like you travel oh you can take your test on the go or somebody can come like all the things that they do in the US we didn't do that um, so yeah my coach that was awesome. what was her name? Ioana Siom. It's, it's Greek, I know. Siom. Got it. We'll get close enough. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So, um, someone asked you, are you going to compete this year? Uh, or also, what are your next year goals? Okay, so as things around the world are evolving right now, we're there around the coronavirus. Um, at the beginning here, we had a week of like crazy things, but we were still like, the Olympics were still on the on the running, on the go. So we were practicing. The stadiums were open only for uh, people that can make it to the Olympics. So we kept practicing, but then the Olympics got canceled. So we're like, okay, you're not allowed to go in the stadiums anymore, done. So for like three weeks, we're sitting home uh, and then we're back training and practicing and Greece is saying that they're going to do some competitions um, but since the yeah, IAA, um, IAA yeah, uh, froze everything but it's kind of a weird part of like should I compete should I not like is there a point or not um, but Greece is doing nationals is doing some other small competitions and they're going to have some inter international meets I don't know how traveling is going to be we don't know yet um, so far, what we said with my coach is that we are going to practice compete and see how it goes. Because this year, as everybody did, um, I cannot imagine, like, all the high jumpers and everybody, we put a lot of effort in this year. Like, from September up until now, we've put a lot of effort. Uh, for me, it was like I started a crazy, not a crazy diet, but, like, a, a really strict diet. I, I moved into a new house because of the stadium, like, all of those things that people just... They're like, okay, I'm going to be there, there. Um, so that falling apart, I think we all kind of like, okay, I put so much effort in the training. Like, how am I going to get the results back? 
So I think I'm going to compete and see how it goes. But obviously, I'm not going to push myself hard. I'm going to wait for my legs just to be, um, to be a little bit easy and obviously focus again on next year. That's smart, by the way. Huh? Yeah. Totally. Hopefully, they won't. I mean, I don't think they have a choice. But yeah, not to push this year extra hard because there's no point. Right. Yeah, it, it, I agree with you. It's, it's been a weird year. So, really? Is everything open in, in Greece right now? Or are you able to train or not yet? Yeah, yeah, no, we're able to train. The stadiums opened last week for, again, for like, uh, we started at levels. So, pre Olympic team got in first, and then now it opened for like most people, like the national team. And now slow will open for everybody, uh, but still again like some crazy rules like keep distance, like you can't run in the same like lane. You have to have one lane apart. Um, a specific amount of people allowed in the stadium. The indoors are not open, so we're outside and it's hot right now. It's hot. Um, but yeah, everything is about to be open. From Monday, I think the restaurants are starting to open too. So we're about to be like full, like on the, like nothing ever happened which is weird thinking that because two weeks ago or three I was in here, like, what am I going to do now? Like, what is happening? But, yeah. And I know that you were, it's where you guys are at right now, which is weird, too. And I keep telling my friends from the U.S., we're two weeks ahead, so what I'm doing, you're going to be doing. <laughs> true, true. We... Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, we are. It's it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. I get, we had also to, we couldn't go outside of the house. I don't know if you guys have regulations. We had to text our government in order to get out of the house, like inform them that we're going to go out. And we could go out for specific things like grocery, pharmacy, um, or anything like that. It was really major, like take out your dog or something. And you couldn't, if they catch you in like a different city or something, there were a lot of penalties and you had to pay fines. So now I'm like, I can go out of my house and not text. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, sounds, uh, it wasn't as a strict in yeah, the United States. I mean, it's, uh, it was, yeah, they were telling people, hey, stay in the house. Uh, the businesses were closed. But sounds like where you were, it was an actual lockdown. I mean, yeah. It was, yeah, it's. It's weird, I don't know, because, like, if you go three neighborhoods down, completely different. If you go one city, like, it's completely different everywhere you go. And I'm pretty sure that's how it is over there, too. Like, it's it's not everywhere the same. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, we're almost on complete lockdown. Wow. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad it, uh, are you, first and foremost, you, I'm assuming you are okay, your family members are okay. Yeah, yeah, no, they're, we had more, more time together, which was really nice and awesome. Uh, my mom kind of worked crazy hours because she's a nurse, oh. um, but me and my siblings were home, just, I learned how to play video games, well, I tried. Hey, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, I cooked a lot, and I put on my, I put my diet on the side, and I cooked everything that I wanted for the past three months <laughs> that is awesome. and you know what i'm glad that you are sharing that you know, because we want to get to that there is a part there is a part in the, in the interview that we wanna, we're gonna ask you about that so uh, that's good so, um, uh, so what is your uh, somebody asked here what is your favorite drill to reinforce takeoff positions can you ask that again because you cut yeah, out sorry. uh what is your favorite drill to reinforce takeoff positions. Takeoff positions. Yeah. Um, okay, this is, um, I don't know what to call this. I think they're called Indian jumps or like the one that you kind of like, like little kids do like the, 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 the. I love this one weirdly because your leg comes straight in the right position and like you're forced to go up instead of going in and diving in, which that's what I always do. Even now in my videos, I feel like I'm going high and then I look at my video. I hate phones. I hate phones at practice right now because I can see what exactly I did wrong. And I'm like, what? That's not how it felt. That's not how I felt. I felt like I was going high. And my girl's like, nope, you dive in, you dive in, you dive in. Uh, but thinking about doing the Indian jump at my last like step, it actually really helped me to bring my shoulders to in the right position and my leg. And right now I'm kind of scared of placing my leg because of different uh, injuries that I had. So doing the Indian is actually really nice. That is pretty cool. Yeah, we do that one quite a bit too. 
Uh, I love it. I love drills and all of the drills that my coach, like, she will go to sleep and she'll be like, so I had a dream. Here we go again. <laughs> or I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw this and it's like, okay, great. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I bet. It's like, so I was, I was looking at the Hungary Track Club and they did this exercise. I was like, what? It's not running, right? And it's like, no, no, no. Like, okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, but no, any drills, any drills that just get you out of that mentality of like constantly thinking high jump and it's something else. It's actually really nice. Um, I don't know which one. Oh, the little hurdles and just doing one, two, three, jump, one, two, three, jump. I love this one too. Yeah, those are pretty good. Your, your coach speaks English? She does, yes. Okay, yeah. You know what? I, I have a, a lot of friends in Europe by the way, they, they, they call me, they text me, they through WhatsApp. And if, if they have a question, I, I love I will I, tell I, her. I, I will I tell her. Talk. So sometimes we even basically send them a video and we chat. And by the way, if I have a question, same thing. I kind of like just go, okay, hey, what do you think about this? You know, because. Don't worry. I won't send any new drills. Don't worry. I, I see her word in the background. Don't worry. No more drills. <laughs> Well, there is one really good one that they have to hang you from the roof. It's going to be great, you know? I'm joking. I thought first <laughs> you. It's one that you actually, you know, I have to throw you from the ceiling, you know, from, from that, from that. Or it's from like the an actual bit, like, what hanging from where? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's funny. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, well, it sounds like, uh, how was your athletic experience at the University of Georgia? Oh, I loved it. I love Georgia. Um, okay, so just being a European and coming to the U.S., it's a strange feeling. Mm -hmm. um, the culture and how it works and freshman 15 that everybody knows and says it's European 20. I want to say the pounds that you gain because you guys eat a lot of preservatives. And by you guys, I don't mean you personally. I mean like the Americans. There's a lot of bad food there. And we don't know that coming in in Australia. Like, Yogurt? It's yogurt. Salad? It's salad. There's no added salt. What do you mean? Preservatives? Um, that's what I hated the most. But And the buffet at Georgia was good at the dining hall. Uh, that's what I really hated. But everything else I loved. It took a while to, um, to get adapted, you know, to the fast schedule. Like we had an hour 30 minutes on the track and we we're like, you got there, you start warming up and you go. Which compared to here, like, Oh, I brought my coffee. Like, let's sit and chill with the coach. Oh, like, let's talk. And like, yep. Just that. Uh, let's just like, oh, how's your day? Blah blah, blah whatever. Uh, but there it was like, go, go, go. Like, yeah, it's. We had price at three thirty. At three thirty, you're warming up, which I was like, mm, okay, cool. Um, so that was different. And then of course practice. Um, the way practice happens there. So we were doing um, a lot of things with our heptathletes. Uh, I heard a lot of stories about different universities. And unfortunately, from my experience, all of my teammates from Greece that we went to other universities, they had a really bad experience because a lot of coaches in the US, they don't know high jump and jumps in general. And that's that really bad to say, but they're not that, that technical. They're more of like, okay, run drills, do this or do this. And they're not that technical which I noticed a lot, like, and people in the U.S. jump high, but their technique scares me sometimes. Yeah. And you so probably, it's like, yeah. It's, 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 it's just a completely different system. Yeah, it is a completely different system. And also, I think it's also like you can become a coach no matter what in the U.S. Uh, compared to here that you have to go to coaching school and you have to learn some things. Uh, that's why I was glad I had purchased, which he was Greek, he studied here, but also his schedule was somewhere in between. So he had to adjust to obviously the US ways. And like we had a, an hour in the lifting room. So we we're like, go, go lifting, lifting, like fast. Uh, compared to here again, which I'm like, hmm, what did you do today between my exercises? Um, but no, I love Georgia. I loved my team. It was really nice. We had a really nice group. Um, I don't know, I miss game nights, weirdly. We're all gathering together at my house or somebody else's house. We're just playing games all the time. And um, I don't know if that still happens with the people that now are there because I don't think I know almost anybody, which is also weird. People that are like going and coming, going and coming. That's something else that I had to get used to that. Like people are not stable. Um, but yeah, I love game nights. I love my team. I love traveling with... Uh, 
so much for competitions, which was, and also the schedule. We don't have competitions here. Obviously, in Europe, you have to find competitions here. They're like, every weekend, you have a competition. Look at that. Mm. Um, what else? I don't know. I think I've gotten a little bit out of topic with the game nights and stuff, but I really liked my teammates there. And practices were different. That's the summary. Wow. Wow. I think that you answered my next question. I said basically, you know, I, I, yeah, you just made a comparison between the European system and the American system a little bit. So I'm not going to ask you that one anymore. That was, that was good. Uh, in regards to your training, how a, could you please provide an example of a week of training in pre-season and in-season? Oh. Okay, really, I'm really terrible with remembering what we do, but I will try. Like, um, we basically, okay, so in September, we we don't touch our spikes for like almost two months. Um, we just do stairs, obviously, we run in the woods, I don't know if that makes any sense, like we go and we find like heels, so we do heels a lot, um, the stairs, uh, weights, but with like almost nothing on the bar so with five and five maybe two and a half but reps like crazy reps we call this as like the build-up phase um what else do we do running but not so much because we're high jumpers uh, so yeah monday usually is, is running now is jumping um tuesday's weights almost always wednesday's drills so we do a lot of drills. Even before we put our spikes on, coach will like put the little box in front of high jump and start with, you know, just sitting on the box and jumping. Like, remember how to arch your back. And then we'll just do like straight up running to the bar and start twi like twisting and jumping, um, like slowly getting back. Like the drills that we said, like the Indian jumps and then one, two, three, like a lot of drills on Wednesday and general conditioning, like um, not general conditioning, but machines i want to say like different parts of your body that you don't work out thursday's day off always yes and always right now it's kind of complicated but usually thursday's day off which i love and then friday jumping and saturday wait um i i get a day off before my competition and after my competition uh, my legs are kind of in a weird spot i have a lot of injuries so i love my rest which I also weirdly find that for high jumpers, it's ideal. Like a lot of high jumpers that I talk with, like, yeah. Cool. Um, it's nice. What else? Um, uh, yeah, it's pretty, much, it's pretty much it. Yeah, okay. Now, now yeah, because you know that we, we, we were competing uh, We were competing in Germany. Uh, we were talking about it. Uh, what were you going to say about that? We were talking with Costas. Banyotis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people do that too. And we did that in Georgia a lot. We did like a, a fast lifting session the day, either the day off in the morning or the day before sometimes, but it was like two or three, like super fast. Uh, but here I do it, for example, if I compete on Saturday, I'll do it on Thursday. And it has a little bit more, um, more exercises. And then I have the day off. But in Georgia, we did that. And it depends, obviously, the competition, too. Because if you had, like, if it's at the World Championship and you have, you have two days in between or three days in between, it depends on how your coach is going to go about it. I don't really find the huge difference. I like all three. Like, I don't mind whatever, whatever the coach chooses. I really don't mind. So it's the same to me. So you don't feel any different, like, when there's something? No, what I liked um, in the U.S., no matter what, and don't tell my coach that, uh, my coach here, I liked the morning of uh, the competition that we, I hated it, but I liked it. I liked that they would wake us up to go and do like a morning stretch or even to lift to the two exercises that we did. Or if we didn't have lifting, they'll wake us up and they're like, okay, like 9.30 or something, just wake up and go in the halls and just stretch and walk or do whatever. Here, I don't do it, and I sh I'm 26 year old. I should wake up and do it, but I just like my sleep, so sometimes I skip it. But I love that. I love the mo the morning session for just getting me up and doing something. That's the only difference. But yeah. I have heard that before. There are some jumpers that re respond really well to that. Yeah, we might try this here. Yeah. Oh, I, I, sorry, cut out again. Sorry. So, oh, we might try this here because. 
I feel like whenever I have too much rest, I just feel really flat. So I'm looking at maybe if I maybe like some fast lifts or I lift a little bit before. Yeah, you you can try. Also, you're young too, so your your energy doesn't go anywhere. I'm old. I'm an old soul now, so I like the rest. And I think as we get older, like we need rest practice because obviously we have so much practice in our history. But yeah, you should totally try the morning or the day before. I think it will help you. I like the just getting into the mood too in the morning, but don't don't do it too much. I think we did. I can't even remember what we did. I think we did a hand snatch and something else, but I can't even remember what. Hmm. Cool. Like really fast, uh, really fast and active weights. Was it with a lot of weight or, or was no, it no, like weight? two and a half probably or five, like super okay. low. Sometimes even the bar, because we would travel and put the bar under the bus and just. Okay, cool. Well, you know, we, we try. We try. I mean, you usually it's, it's part of finding out what works for each individual. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. That, that's, we'll try. So, that's what we're doing right now too like i came back so i'll be with my coach and we'll be like okay what do you need for your legs i know you had an injury right how you had a surgery um oh i had a lot so i had surgery three years ago uh but this year at a competition in amsterdam which i love which is unfortunate because i love one of my favorite competitions on my last jump i really placed um my leg really hard down and my knee went like uh, went like this uh, so i got a bony edema i think i don't know how to say it. it had a lot of liquid in it um okay. so i had to sit outside for four months and i i missed the world championship last year i missed a lot of things but um well it happened and now yeah now i'm obviously i'm kind of scared of placing my leg down but gotta do a lot of drills slowly get back at it you do great you do great we yeah, we will leave. But it's gonna be good. That's right. Yeah, I hope so. That's right. So, if we let's imagine we visit Greece, okay? What would you recommend us? I mean, tell me a little bit about the most beautiful things of Greece, places, food. So, what, what, what would you tell us? Hey, you know, this is where you need to be at. Okay. Um. Well, when I was in the U.S., somebody came. The dog. Yeah, yeah, we have like, 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 He's like a year and a half. Yeah. He's a puppy. Still a puppy. <laughs> He's yeah. still there. Still there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what okay. were you with uh, me? Okay. So, what I missed the most when I was in the U.S. was the food. Yeah. I love food. Uh, but what I missed the most from Greece is the food, and I still enjoy it. And also is the way that we eat. Uh, what was really strange to me in the U.S. is that I will go, we'll sit down, and they'll bring you the check. And I'm like, why are you kicking me out? Like, what is, what is this? <laughs> Compared to, like, here, where you sit for five hours and you just talk with your friends and go on and on and on. And they, at the end of it, um, my roommate is foreign. So she's learning those, and I'm really excited. Like, we'll go to get a coffee, and they'll be like, oh, it's on the house which that will never happen in the U.S. What's on the house? Here's like, oh, it's on the house. You, you come here, so it's fine. Um, so I miss the culture of, like, the, the chillness in the culture um, in Greece. I miss that a lot. What I recommend is obviously, like, souvlaki, so gyros. You guys call gyros gyros? Oh, yeah, um, yeah. I would, I, I'm a sucker for them. Now I eat them. I will stop. I said on Monday. I will see when I start my diet again. Um... What else? The islands. The islands. Uh, Athens sucks. It's it's a weird, it's like a distinct city. It's There's some history you can go and visit and see like the Parthenon, obviously, but it's not nice. The islands are amazing, though. The water is so clear and nice. The beaches. I love them. I love them. And the culture. 
and you guys obviously know you're not from the US, so you understand what I'm saying. I know, different. Exactly, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, in Peru, in the, yeah, the food you can sit down basically is like, you know, just, it's, it's pretty much your table, and you only order a food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. But that's, yeah. And it's not only the table, like, you feel like you become a part of the restaurant. Like, the owner will usually come and greet you and, and sit with you, and at the end, like, of, especially over the, at the summer. At the end, they'll bring you fruits, and they're like, you're like, I didn't order, like, my American friends, when they're like, we didn't order fruits, and I'm like, relax, it's on the house, like, that's what they do here, it's, it's okay, it's okay, they're like, oh, we get free food, and I'm like, yeah, everybody gets food, relax, that is it's okay, um, but yeah, no, I, the culture, the culture is what I love the Greeks, which sometimes is bad, too, when it comes to doing things, like, um, what I like about America is, like, when they said somewhere, this is going to be done by then, that was going to be done by then compared to here it's like mm, it might be done by then so we go one month later and i'm still trying to like get that the bureaucracy the the government here how things work are are weird and that's what i miss uh that's what i miss about the u.s the most it's pretty interesting no so you're so you're european mm. it is it's, it's kind of like south europe and north europe you know it's kind of like a, Oh yeah, sure. it's a little yeah. Bit That's North Europe, completely different story. So, it's, it, 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 you go through only much more with that, what you are saying, like the time, you know, the people, and the, the levels of stress are higher too, you know. So, oh yeah, 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 for sure. Here, there's no stress. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. We need to go to Greece. We need to go to Greece. Yeah. <laughs> That is awesome. Well, the economy sucks, though. We were talking with my roommate today, Maria Vukovic. You probably heard her. Um, she's a high jumper from Montenegro. And she lives... Is that tall girl that you always... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. okay. We're going to have to bring her to the show, too. Yes, she... Um, so, um, we're talking with her. We live together. We're in the same house. And we're talking today, this morning. And we're talking about, like, financially and how things go. And how we don't get... How people don't make money, but they still go out and have this, like, social life. And I was like, you know... I was thinking about the same, but I realized the other day that my friends were like, you know, I have only 10 euros in my bank account. That's enough for two coffees. Let's go drink some coffee. Like, You're right. We don't think about that. If I was in the US, I would be like, 10 euros only? 10, 10 bucks in my account? Like, what? No, it's like three coffees. It's enough. We'll see tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, we'll see what will happen. Yes. Which is it's kind of bad, too. Well, you have to live life. You have to live <laughs> You know, uh, I have a feeling that, uh, you know, it seems to me that in here, uh, a lot of people are very, the cult is a, is a being in debt culture, okay? So the stress comes for financial. Experience. Sorry, my friend, my friend just commented, 10 euros more than two coffees. You're right, I'm sorry. In Greece, the coffee is like 150. So yeah, that's a lot of coffees. If you oh, sit down, like three or four euros. So I was like, yeah, I'm sorry, Philip. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, well, you know, then sounds like we have more than enough coffee. That's good. I like that. Yeah. yeah. You should definitely visit. If you guys are thinking about it, you should definitely visit. Greece is freaking beautiful. And the culture and the food is amazing. We do sometimes training camps. I mean, we, we usually go to Germany. You know? Mm. It, it, we, it, that it, makes uh, sense in Cologne, like oh, the, where the high jumper center is. No, we go to Stuttgart. We go to Stuttgart. Oh, uh, I do you know who trains there? Um, Marie Janflisch. Anne Marie Janflisch, the German high jumper. Yeah, 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 Marie. She trains, she lives in Stuttgart, she, she trains there. I mean, she trains with Thomas. Thomas is her coach. Uh, and every time that we go, we see her. We see her. I mean, she's there training, you know. Uh, we, we, we have friends there that basically uh, Marlon, uh, Jamie, which are the other coaches there. And uh, it's Ben, you know, there is a, a hurdle coach also. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a great time basically training in Stuttgart. That's why we always go back, you know. But, but I tell you what, uh, at some point we probably might go ahead and end up in Greece. Where do you live? In Athens. So, so you live in Athens in, in the center where I see you training is in Athens. Yes, but Athens is kind of... Um... When I say Athens, people think it's a city, but it's kind of more of, think of it more of as a state. So there are many cities in Athens. Okay. So I don't live downtown. I live like 20 or 30 minutes away from downtown. Okay. So it's like, um, Athens is really big. People don't realize it before they come to Greece, but Athens is really, it's like kind of a state. Well, 
if I'm in this way. But yeah, I live in Athens, kind of in the suburbs, but not really, somewhere in between. How far is from your from your training? Uh, oh, I um, so I train at the Olympic Stadium, which is uh, three minutes away, and I train at my club stadium, which is an outdoor one, which is two minutes away, like five and two. If there's no traffic, if there's traffic, like ten minutes away. So I'm in the between. Oh. Okay. What's happening with you? Don't let him go. He's gonna like just freak out again. Yeah. What is happening with you? Okay. So, uh, Tatiana, it, it was awesome. Now, um, you mentioned a uh, first. Uh, let me go ahead and ask you one question here, and then I want to go back to something that you said because I think that there could be some good information in regards to what you said in regards to the diet and the food. And Daniela did a lot of research in regards to that, so that could be something good. But uh, right here it says, what message? What message would you give to all the children, all the, all the girls in the world that would like to be like you someday? Um, that's that's an interesting question. Um, what I was thinking is that you know I I will be at two parts. So first is that if you pick to do athletics uh, or any sport, I think it's really smart and you should stick to it because I was looking around the other day. Uh, I went back to my hometown where I grew up and I'm so thankful that I did athletics because I think I got away from many bad choices that I could have done. If if you understand what I'm saying, like I could have, you know, start smoking or whatever, or maybe not get in the education that I got. Obviously, I'm so thankful for that, the education that I got through athletics. And maybe I would end up somewhere like, in a pretty bad place if I didn't have athletics. So if any girl um, tries to do athletics or any other sport, I think they should be encouraged because they will get so many great opportunities out of it. And then um, what other advice do I have? I mean, I always thought that if I can do it, then everybody can do it. I don't feel like I'm doing something crazy. I just go to practice and I do what my coach says and I try to think about it. I don't overthink. When I'm outside of practice, like when practice is done, it's done. I will come and maybe watch one or two videos or something, but that's it. Um, so if you put your mind to it when you're there, I think everything can happen, if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, I don't know what advice I would have given. That's really good, and I haven't thought about it. I think you, I think you answered the, the question right on. Uh, you know, I'm happy. <laughs> you did great. You did great. Uh, you mentioned about the food in the United States and the diet. And Daniela did a lot of research in regards to that. Experience, and we ended up working also with uh, uh, the, the, the nutritionist of the Peruvian national team. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts in regards to that? I had so many struggles with, you know, the diet and in the U.S. too, I came and I gained weight. And my coach, obviously, in the U.S., you're not allowed to say it's your female athletes that they gain weight. So my coach couldn't say it, but he was Greek and he could, like, he tried to go around and say, like, hey, your jumping is different. But he wasn't allowed to say it. And then I'll come to Greece and people would fat shaming me because in Greece, if you're not a really thin high jumper, like European standards, then something's wrong with you. But in the U.S., compared other than your coaches, people were like, oh, you look great, honey. Oh, honey, your body's amazing. So I had to <laughs> like, for like five years, right, I will go through, oh, my body's great, and I'll come back, and people will be like, did you bring your twin sister with you? Like, what? No, I'm not even kidding. That was something that somebody told, told me, and I felt so bad. I was like, am I that fat? Like, what, what is happening? So... Yeah, I put, I think I put seven or eight kilos when I came in the U.S. That was a lot of weight. And I, I looked at the picture from my freshman year and I'm rounded up. Like, I put a lot of weight. Uh, and I struggled a lot in the U.S. Because, one, for the first time I had, like, a dining hall. And I was like, the food, all the food you can eat and try. And I was like, American food? Like, this must be nice. So I want to try everything. So, obviously. And then I went to my nutrition and I was like, hey, this is what I'm eating and it's not working. Do you have any advice? And all this she was used to Americans and to the American bodies, right? So she was like, oh, add a peanut butter sandwich as a snack, add this, add this. And I was like, add? Like, peanut butter jelly sandwich? Like, what? Um, add this and eat more of this. And I was like, okay. So I tried that. Didn't work. 
um, I think I figured out on my third year in the U.S. how I should eat in the U.S. And I started like finding organic weird stores that in the U.S. you find fresh food to try to imitate what I was eating home. Um, and then I came back to Greece and I just lost the weight like that. Weirdly, everything goes out of your system. Uh, but what I found that works now is literally just fueling your body and not starving. A lot of Europeans starve themselves, which is it's the we call it old school like old school like you shouldn't even drink water like there are coaches here that say you shouldn't even drink water and i'm like what no you need water it like it helps you like i get it the day of competition maybe not drink so many liquids and the day before maybe but i love water i no no um so now i'm working with um with a company sc and nutrition and they're like I've studied biochemistry, we've studied this and this, and our team is going to work with you. And I have five meals per day. Uh, and I am stuffed. And I was like, this, this is crazy. I can eat that much food. So what I just found that it works is like literally, this sounds bad, cut the sugar. It sounds awful. Cut the sugar, cut the sodas. Like this is a basic step that you can start. And in the US, it's so hard to do because we have food fields for everything. Like you go somewhere, like at the dining hall, I remember we had all the coke in the world just with the press of a button. And I was addicted, obviously. But you don't think about those things. Uh, and especially for a high jumper, trying to be as lean as possible is really hard. And there are so many diets out there that I think they will end up making you mentally ill. Because if you, if they take something away from you, you want it more. Right. So I would say, I would, my advice would be everything in moderation. Like, don't go too crazy on one side and don't, don't, don't go too crazy on the other side. That's actually what Marianne and I were talking the other day, too, as well. She's like, I went through so many, she went through so many diets that at some point I was sneaking behind my coach's back and eating. I was sneaking behind, uh, like, my diet and eating. And I think high jumpers have that problem a lot. They want to be, like, really, really thin and they get to a point that they stop eating. Or I heard people just going through coffee only the day of the competition, which to me sounded crazy. Mm. Like, how can you jump on the day off? And especially if the competition is at five or six o'clock in the afternoon, like with just one coffee. Um, I would say moderation, moderation for sure. And just eat what is right for your body. For example, I don't like milk anymore. Like I hate milk and cheese, which more people like, but I don't and I don't, I don't need it. And I'm going through, I went through a phase in the US too that I couldn't eat meat because the meat was so bad that I couldn't eat meat and it was weird too, but now I eat meat. Nice. Uh, but yeah, it's, I think it's what works with everybody. And I have, uh, I don't know if you guys know Maddie, Maddie Jean on Instagram, maybe not. She was my teammate in the US. Um, yeah, that, that, champion. That, that long girl. Yeah, yeah, super, uh, super yeah. blonde, pretty. Yeah, uh, she cooks like everything. She's like this, right? She cooks everything, experiments with all the foods in the world. She's like, I just want variety, but she eats healthy. So I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a right key or a right answer. I think is really observe what works for your body. And I didn't do that. I was just like eating. And now, um, unfortunately, it took me a lot of too many years to notice what works with my body. And Danielle looks like she knows what works for her body. Yeah. Hey, Gianmarco. Hey, Gianmarco. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I agree, but I think it's interesting to me to talk about it because I have a hard time putting my finger on what it is because here I feel like I eat, like, healthy, normally, like, oatmeal and, like, mm -hmm. salad or whatever, whatever I feel like I need in the moment. If I feel like I need something different, then I'll have it, but I feel like I'm pretty on top of it, usually. And then we went to South American Championships uh, in Colombia, and I literally ate the exact same thing because at the hotel they were having a stay at, uh, we were staying there with a few other teams, the team from Argentina, the team from um, Ecuador, and then who else? I think it was just the yeah. three of us. Yeah. Um, and they were giving us food at the hotel, but the nutritionists from each national team were like sending in what was okay for us to eat and not okay to eat. So they were only giving us basically like everyone's plan. You were just getting served the food you would have eaten at home. Anyway. And I lost like a kilo and a half and I didn't even change anything I was eating from the United States to Colombia. So that's what I'm like, I want to know like, 
what's the difference? Because there's something different. Because I didn't change really the food that I was eating, but I was eating normally. She went to Colombia for a weekend to for a competition. For a, that was for a weekend. A weekend, like three weekend. days. And she lost a kilo and a half eating exactly, exactly what she would have done in the United States. You know, I was I was going through the same when I was coming back from the U.S. because I would come and immediately I would shrink, I would lose like two kilos. It's the preservatives that go in the food. It's 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 the preservatives and the salt. Like even the salads, I would buy. I would notice that I wouldn't need to put sa um, salt in my salad in the U.S. and they will last for so long. And I hate it here because I'll buy like a bag of salads, just you know, spinach or whatever, and put it in my fridge, and in two days it goes bad. In the U.S., I remember I'll have it in the fridge for like. A, a week, a good week, and it will still be good. So I think it's all the preservatives that are in food and salt, extra salt. There's so much salt in the food there. Um, but I don't, I, what I did, I think I was just shopping like as as organic as possible in the U.S. Like even the meat, and it was so expensive. I remember I was paying like fourteen dollars on some point for chicken, and I was like, screw that! I don't want to pay fourteen dollars for two pieces of chicken because they're organic. And I can eat them, but I can go to Walmart and get 20 pieces of chicken with four euro, four, uh, four bucks or five bucks. It's the quality. So I changed my quality and I was broke my last two years in the U.S. Because we're all getting the same stipend in the university. And everybody was making fun of me. Like, where did you spend your money? Like, I saved so much money. It was like fruits and salads. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. I went through the same and it was so weird. Every time I come, like also my, my face would get puffy too in the US, like bigger, um, my body, like I would hold um, liquid, I think. I don't know how to liquidate, like I will hold liquid. Yeah, it's it's the country and the food. And it makes sense. They have so many people and the food has to stay on the shelves, but I hate it. I hate it. And I try, like I, my only uh, thing is try to make everything from scratch if I, mean, I do that now and it's hard i spent five hours in the kitchen but i make my own bread like even here now people started adding more preservatives in the store which sucks i'm like no don't don't become america please don't become america um but yeah if you can whatever you can do from scratch like even your oatmeal don't buy the oatmeal i love it the oatmeal that it comes ready in like little piles with like apple and cinnamon and all that i never do that i i love them but don't do that just buy plain oatmeal and put whatever you need in. You know, it's like small steps you can take to make it a little bit more yours compared to buying it ready, which I love in the US, The how things are so ready and packaged for you. It's like you don't have to put any effort in, but. True, true. That is true. Well, Tatiana, I want to thank you very much for being with us. We had a good time. Thank you. We Thank had you. a great time with you. It was great. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm not drinking coffee. I would love to join you. I'm drinking water, but cheers to that. Thank you. I finished my coffee. Well, you know, I have, I have a confession. I have a confession, okay? Yeah, it's coffee, but I, I switch to decaf because I just like the flavor. And you yeah, have, I like the smell too. Yeah, I love it. So I just, if I keep drinking coffee like at this time, I'm not going to be able to go to sleep. So, but since that, the show is called Coffee with Hugo, it will be decaf. But decaf. Hugo, but yeah. no. Good for you. Good. No, it's good for you. Here in Greece, we drink coffee way too many times. It's cheap. As I mentioned, it's 150. You know, it's like 150. You get it. And it's, yeah. it's good coffee. And I will go to practice. Like, do you, should we order coffee and just chill for 10 minutes? I'm like, sure. And it's like 6 o'clock. And I look at my clock and I look at... I should have gotten decaf, I should have, but we're not so good with decaf here yet. So I get what you're saying. Coffee, but I like the taste too. Yeah, that's my thing. Can't get away from that. So. I know, it's hard. It's it's an addiction. That's another addiction. Try to eliminate your sugar in the coffee, Danielle, if you drink any, any coffee. I actually don't like coffee. It's oh, good for you then. I don't drink coffee at all. Yeah, she doesn't drink coffee. You know. He adds a bunch of sugar, though. I do, I do. Yeah, so. Which, you know, knowing that, that's why probably I have to work out every day. Because I have to just, I, I just, so much sugar. Do you work out together? Um, I mean, when I'm training, normally not. But right now, I'm just on break because 
we don't even know what our next competitions are going to be. So if they're next year, because we don't know if we'll have a season this year, yeah. there's no point in me, like, keep training, especially since I've been training for like, eight months. Yeah, just so I'm just resting. Just some basic things to like just maintain like your shape and your your conditioning. Yeah. I think you 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 can do you can do every uh, every athlete's dream, like create a practice or workout for your coach. That's my dream. I want to make my coach suffer one day, especially when she put us so many like, stairs and like hundred fifties or whatever. I want to create a workout program for a coach yeah. to make them Thank suffer. Tatiana. It's okay. No it's okay. You know what? Crazy drill coming. It's okay. Crazy drill coming. A kangaroo track club Instagram. You see? For Tatiana. Okay. When people find us coming yes. out, I feel like we're going to the track after this. I'm just spitting you my ideas and uh, and what I want. And I'll say, you can you can do it for me. I will. I'm gonna do it. Oh my goodness! Video gonna, coming soon. Gonna video coming soon. Crazy deal. Real coming, dedicated to Tatiana. No. Awesome. Make out. him suffer to see, like, the drills that you hate the most, those, it's what he needs to do. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, the one I hate the most that he makes me do is, I don't know if you've seen it, it's like, it, I look really dumb doing it. It's the one with the head thing. You know what I mean? Where he's like, to a core. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I told him, I said, don't post this anywhere. I'm just doing this to make you happy. <laughs> Good stuff. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, this is good stuff. Person, what are you doing? What is that? And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe a long lost twin came and you know now started doing the video. I don't know who that is. No, I I love I love your videos and the pictures and the drills that you guys upload. And I'm really glad there is a coach out there in the US uh, that works on drills and on technique. Like I. I love and I've been following you guys and I told you my coach gets inspired so careful what you post. Because <laughs> that yeah, if you don't control that, I will send you my drills and then you yeah, 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 hey, let us know. That'll be good. Yeah, we, hey, we, we'll, we'll need that. Let's do this. I can I can send you some videos. I upload a lot of things on my Instagram and a lot of high jumper actually um actually reached out to me and like asked me about drills and my coach was like, You're posting my secrets and I was just like, It's fine, you can <laughs> We can share. It's okay. Um, but yeah, I will next time we we'll do something different or weird. I will send it to you. Awesome, awesome. And we'll 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 we wanna plan a a, um, a, a training camp in uh, in Greece. You should. We we actually just fixed my uh, club. We uh, my club was without a track for four years because government here it's. Yeah, and now we have a new track, and I'm just so happy. I look around, I'm like, I can create a training camp here. This is going to be great. <laughs> uh, the jumping, the mat is new, the track is new. So, yeah, if you guys look for a place, or we can go to the islands, too. Okay, so it's nice. Right. <laughs> cool. Cool. Well, you know what? We'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be cool. Awesome. Yes. You were saying something. Sorry. No, no, I just said yes, of course. Okay, cool, cool. Tatiana, you have been very great, very, very nice with your time. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. I really enjoy this this episode of, of Coffee with Hugo. It will basically be, you, you, were, you were awesome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. See, another good thing coming out of quarantine. Weird. You get to know people more. Hey, so thank you. Thank you, COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, take care of yourself. Bye. Bye, you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Daddy. Thank you. Bye-bye.